Today's house hunters are ready to move to pastures new in the countryside closer to family. Our properties offer rooms with views that leave them startled. Ooh, wow. Oh, that's amazing. That is really surprising. Did not expect this. And we've also found spaces that leave them dumbfounded. Oh, they're absolutely fabulous. Gosh. I'm speechless. Today, I'm in Lincolnshire, and behind me is Heckington Windmill, the last remaining eight-sailed working windmill in the country. Originally constructed in 1830, the tower has recently been refurbished, and now not only mills wheat, but also barley for an on-site brewery. Later on in the show, I'll be finding out more about this rather unique enterprise. Lying on England's east coast, Lincolnshire covers a vast area of over 2,000 square miles. The county shares borders with Cambridgeshire, Leicestershire, Nottinghamshire and England's smallest county, Rutland. In northeast Lincolnshire lie the Wolds, a landscape of rolling hills, valleys and chalk streams. Further south, marshy Fenland was drained several centuries ago to reveal low-lying, nutrient-rich agricultural land which generates more fresh produce than anywhere else in the country. When it comes to setting up home, the town of Stamford is one of the most desirable centres in the county. Here, the architecturally rich streets are lined with stunning Georgian facades and over 600 listed buildings made from local mellow limestone. Lincolnshire also happens to be one of the most sparsely populated counties in England and so makes for an attractive option for those seeking a truly rural escape. As it stands, the average price of a detached house here in Lincolnshire currently comes in at £176,000, which is around £100,000 below the national figure, which represents a pretty good proposition for those seeking their very own escape to the country. Now, the beautiful city of Lincoln itself and some of the villages to the north are slightly more expensive. But heading east towards Boston, well, areas like that haven't seen price rises for quite some time, so these represent even more value for money. Time to catch up with today's buyers then and find out why they're looking in this beautiful and reasonably priced part of the world. Peter and Melanie met whilst working as teachers in the same school and have now been married for 25 years. She's a very strong lady, um, good sense of humour, very loyal and very, very popular. Peter, very good with words, irritating because he always corrects me, but he's brilliant. Based in Lots Heath between Southampton and Portsmouth, they live with their two dogs and two cats. Peter and Melanie have three children between them from previous relationships, all of whom have moved away with their own families. Now our buyers feel it's their turn to try somewhere new. We've been here 23 years. When we first moved here, yeah, it was strawberry fields, uh, but recently all the housing development around us is new. So gradually from open fields and areas to walk the dogs, we're now surrounded by houses. Peter is retired, but dedicated head of science Melanie is finding it harder to cut ties as she approaches the end of her working career. I don't want to retire, but I've got to. They've appointed my successor. I've got to move on, and there's no way I'd still be wanting to live in this house knowing that my work was just down the road. So I'd really like to move. And the ideal base for them will be somewhere within easy reach of their narrow boat, docked in the East Midlands, and their five grandchildren who live in London and Yorkshire. We'd love to be closer to family, and it seems that Lincolnshire will offer exactly that. So equidistant between children and grandchildren and boat would be ideal. And we actually managed to take the canal boat through Lincoln last summer and it was absolutely beautiful. So uh, Lincolnshire is where we'd like to head. Narrowboat enthusiasts for over 30 years, Peter and Melanie plan to enjoy their newfound free time by spending the summer months of the year exploring Britain's waterways. The lovely thing about narrowboating is that you can get out and you're just away from everywhere. The boat is usually in the middle of nowhere and you can just walk, you can, you can enjoy the, uh, the space. You meet a whole variety of people, you can go to places you never dream of, it's lovely. And on dry land during the winter months, Melanie's passion for education means she's considering starting back at school. I love teaching. I think helping in a school would give me a way into becoming part of the community. As for Peter, he's looking forward to spending as much time as he can tending his garden. 
and they're both relishing the thought of entering this next phase of their lives together. We're going to have more time to do the things we like doing and do new things as well. Yeah, he can go to museums and I'll go riding or I'll go and, and do I something. I promise not to join I the hate, choir. I hate museums and he can't <laughs> sing. <laughs> At all. Lincolnshire. Gorgeous day. Isn't Beautiful just, weather. You could have picked anywhere. Come on. Why have you chosen Lincolnshire? I used to live at Waddington. Right. So I've got a, 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 a grounding here. I used to live on the RAF station at Waddington. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted a, a county that was different to all the other counties that we, we, we'd been to. Now, the boat's the all-important thing, isn't it? How much time do you plan on spending on this boat in your retirement, then? Well, perhaps five months a year, something like that. Oh, not nice. all in one block. OK, so not all at once. So I take it then you want the commute time to be as small as possible. At the moment, it's about three hours to drive up. And if we could cut that to an hour, hour and a half, it would be ideal. OK, well, let's talk about the house. What do you need from this house then, Mel? Um, it's got to have three bedrooms. Um, I'd like really a, a kitchen which has got a dining area in it doesn't yeah. have to be it could we could have a formal dining room as well i'm not worried about that um it can be a bungalow can be a standard house it has to have a garden though who's the big gardener are you both of you? oh him it doesn't what? have to be big just has to have a feeling of space we're looking in a part of the world where you get a lot for your money yeah. that must be one of the main drivers while you're looking yes here, yeah. i suppose you could say we are downsizing to something the same size but it's cheaper well, that makes perfect sense, Mel. Um, <laughs> and we're also homeless because we've sold our house. Yes. Well, you know what, though? That actually is music to my ears because it means that you're committed now. You're committed to this move. So let's talk about budgets. How much have you got to spend then? Well, 350, uh, but perhaps 400 if it's something absolutely beautiful. Great. All right. Well, it's a beautiful day. Let's get started. Come with me. Thank you. With a maximum budget of £400,000, Peter and Mel have a fairly concise brief. They want a three-bed property with a country-style kitchen diner and a sizeable garden, all in a location within reasonable reach of their narrowboat. We've come up with a fine selection of Lincolnshire properties with which to tempt our buyers, but we'll be keeping the price tag under wraps until the end of each house tour. Our last destination is the Mystery House, where classic style meets 21st century technology and could literally bring the retirement dream to the front door. We're starting our property search in the sought-after village of Ropsley, an hour and 15 minutes drive from our buyer's boat in Willington. In the quiet village centre are a host of period cottages alongside a post office and a pub. There's also a primary school which could present rewarding opportunities for Mel as a volunteer. And there are a number of footpaths in the area which should make for some enjoyable dog walking. Located on the edge of the village is our first offering. So, option number one is this. Looks good. Looks good, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah, it looks very good. Looks super. Looks good size. The original yes. part of the property, that side, okay. the yep. front, was two up, two down, 16th century. Oh, that's why the wow. that's You've why that, that that angle. Yes, correct. You can turn around on the front drive. But actually, you've got an in and out drive. That's yes. even better. Now we're living, aren't we? Yeah, we don't like having to reverse onto a road. Her reversing's not good. <laughs> you can say that. I can't. <laughs> so first impressions, these are good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yep. Let's go inside, shall we? Yep. Lovely. Come on, mate. After you. Dating all the way back to 1590, this attractive stone property has accommodation over three floors. It has been hugely extended over the years, building on the original character to create a unique country home. So let's start with this split-level living room. What do you Brilliant. think? Oh, it's lovely. Interesting, yeah. Not too big, um, but gives that lovely feeling of space. Um, and beautifully light. Well, being such an old property, you know, an old two-up, two-down, you'd yeah. never have this sort of space. This, apparently, is conversions of an old barn and with a conservatory beyond, it really brings that outside. It does outside spread it, stretches it beautifully, yeah. doesn't it? That's very yeah, you've nice. You've got a wood burner as well. And a, and, yeah. a, and a big hearth. Lovely. Like the textures. Well, this exposed stonework, stone work this timber work, it works, doesn't it? You don't, it you don't have well. to decorate, that's why. <laughs> but you will have to dust the beams. <laughs> oh, job allocation, I like it. Absolutely. Sorted. Well, let's go to the kitchen, see what you think of that. Follow okay. me. Heading into the oldest part of the house, I'm hoping Mel and Peter will continue to be impressed by what the kitchen offers. 
Oh, mm. that is fascinating. Well, kind of galley style, isn't it? Just walking straight yeah. through. But it's not really too constricted, is it? No. There's enough space yeah. to feel right. Through there, yeah. you've got a door going to a really handy utility, downstairs loo. Right. OK. Yeah. Now, there's two rooms either side of this wall. A dining room straight off it. Right. And yeah. then you've got another snug that side as oh, well. Wow. We can, we can walk around all day and miss each other. We could. Yeah. Sounds ideal. Yeah. <laughs> That's a perfect retirement. Yeah. Now, your choices are these. You could refurb this kitchen as is, maybe incorporate some of that rear space, or use an entirely different room for the kitchen. Mm. Oh, that sounds intriguing. Sounds Let's intriguing. Just keep looking yeah, at have a look. Now, see this room? Oh, this is a fabulous room. Ooh. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. That is really surprising. I and did this not is, expect that. And this is where you thought the kitchen could could yeah. come. Well, look, this wall here, it's only a stud partition, so you could bring this room right back right to that back. stone wall. Yes. It would make an absolutely brilliant kitchen. Yeah, no, that's, that's it got is. a lot of possibilities. I like it. This field definitely continues. Let's hope so. Yeah. Even more upstairs. Come on, Oh, that would be lovely. With some expert input, this could make an incredible kitchen with impressive rural views. Next, we're off to explore upstairs. There are five bedrooms here and a family bathroom. Up on the second floor, in the eaves, is a large double bedroom. And the other bedrooms are all on the first floor, including two cosy but well-presented doubles, as well as a small single. But we're stopping off at the rather generous master suite. So ensuite, dressing room. Oh, I've got a dressing room. I've got somewhere to put my clothes. Yeah. Now, good yes. size, isn't it? Yep. Lovely. It's a very, very good size. Dual room. aspect. The view is lovely, isn't it? This is something I've never seen before. Some of the things in this house are completely different, and it will be absolutely fascinating to just walk around later on and, and get a feel yeah. for where the yeah. other other rooms the are. The meld between the new and the old is interesting, mm. and that's been done quite well, I think. This modern extension, two-story modern extension. It yes. completely changes the whole house. Let's go outside and talk about price. Mm. That will be difficult. It will, indeed. The garden here, of just under half an acre, is mostly lawned and blessed with stunning, uninterrupted views over open fields. So, cracking outlook. Certainly. Now, the house, you can see now, it looks a lot bigger from this side than the front, doesn't it? It's it is. very big. Lots of rooms. Mm -hmm. Well, OK, all this must come at a cost. Let's guess the price. How much do you think this house is on the market for? You can go first. Thank you. Well, I, I would guess they would be asking a little shy of 400, knowing what our budget is. Okay. 395. All right. With the word 375. Well, as it stands, this property is on the market for offers around £435,000. Having spoken to the owner, they said they would be prepared to negotiate down towards the top end of your budget. Well, that's something to think about. It's intriguing, man. It's a first option. It's a big one. Yes. It is. I think your job is to discuss amongst yourselves whether it's too big, and then we can go from there. Yep. Yeah. All right? Okay. Yeah. Catch you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. See you later. Over budget by £35,000, but open to offers, this spacious detached period property with five bedrooms benefits from gorgeous country views in an enviable edge of village location. When we first saw the property, I thought it looked really good. I love the stonework of the house, and it looked very neat, tidy and up together. When we came in, this room particularly, um, I felt very comfortable with. When we came to the newer part of the property, it didn't have the comfortable feel, and that, to me, it didn't match with the rest of the house. I think it's the proportions that is nice. But having said that, we have to look very carefully at downsizing to somewhere not too big. That was good. Yeah. So you didn't get lost inside? No, we found all... The, well, we think we found all the rooms. Lots well, the hopefully. Rooms. <laughs> there are lots. There are lots. Maybe too many, but that's something to discuss maybe yes. later on. Yes. Should we keep going? Lovely. Yeah. Let's go. The manor house itself has not survived, but after... 50 years of neglect, Lady Ursula Chumley has worked to restore the natural beauty of the site and opened the gardens to the public. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Easter Moor Gardens. Thank you. It is absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, it's quite a vista, isn't it? 
It is absolutely yeah. gorgeous. So the house Thank must you. have been able to look out onto that. So the gardens were really important to the house. And they had right. this fantastic 270 degree view. And it was one of the reasons I decided to restore them. A lot of the design that was here, we've replaced yes. because we have photographs from about 100 years ago. That um, must have been a major decision, though. Yeah, it wasn't was it? a really stupid decision. <laughs> I didn't say brave, but you said stupid. <laughs> Lady Chumley and her team have restored 10 of the 12 acres of garden here, which is now divided into two distinct sections. Within the remaining Tudor walls, the main garden echoes the one previously planted here. Modern additions include a yew tunnel created from 200-year-old yew trees and a traditional white garden. The second section was planted to inspire visitors. It has a vegetable plot, a pickery and a cottage garden. So this is where the house was. And you can see over there, that's where the conservatory was. With a fantastic view looking out over the gardens. It must be beautiful. Trying to encourage ecological diversity is something that I'm really keen on. So we do have a lot of meadows, and obviously a lot of bulbs have single flowers, which are excellent for insects. Yeah. So the planting is thought about carefully in terms of the ecology? Very much so. That must be yeah, interesting. It's very your job. interesting. Yeah, really interesting. Lovely. When we first came here, we were in a period of destruction. So we had heavy machinery, bonfires, and we really wanted to do some actual horticulture as soon as possible. So we started growing sweet peas, and uh, we got a bit obsessed with them, and we now grow 100 varieties. Sweet peas were introduced to the UK from Sicily at the end of the 17th century. However, it was some 200 years later in the 1900s when many of the varieties we find today were cultivated by botanist Henry Eckford. He experimented with the native Sicilian species to create a broader range of colours and sizes. Lady Ursula is taking Mel and Peter to the pickery where they can get a bit more hands-on and plant some of their own. The first thing to do is to fill the pot with the compost. You can do the heavy bit, don't drop it on the flowers. Some guiders. You want me to get muddy? So sweet peas need a good deep base, and we're going to um, add some, this is slow-release fertiliser, that's something that's high in potash. They're, they're, they're high feeders then, are they? Yes, they are. So we're just going to sprinkle a bit of that in, in there. Now, the important thing about training sweet peas is, as you know, they have tendrils on yeah. them. Yes. So this has got nice rough texture. So what is it? It's, it's a dogwood. The most important thing is to have lots going on on the top, because a sweet pea is narrowest at its base, right. and it gets wider as it goes up. Now, the key Gosh. to good sweet peas are good roots. So we're going to tap this out. Oh, and there you can see. Beautiful root structure. These are heritage varieties, so they don't grow as tall. So we thought that it would be nice for you to have this because then they might be better sized on the canal boat. Oh, that's lovely. So they'll thought. get to that's about four to, four to five foot tall. Thank you. We've Thank had you. a lovely time. We've learned a great deal. It's well, very kind of you. Thank and you. And I've got sweet peas at last because you've never grown <laughs> them. <laughs> they Good heritage sweet they peas. They will look beautiful on the front of the boat. Peter and Mel may have been impressed by the landscape grounds here at Easton, but might have to scale back their grand garden plans when it comes to our next property. And to get there, we're travelling south and out of the county to Tickencote in Rutland, which is an hour and a half drive from their narrowboat. With its attractive traditional stone houses, Tickencote is in a quiet conservation area and the River Gwash meanders around the outskirts of the village. On its doorstep is Rutland Round, a circular walk which has long attracted ramblers and is bound to be a hit with Mel and Peter. Located in the heart of the village is our next property. OK, option number two, a very different option. As you can see, we're semi-detached, first of all. I've got no right. objection to that. Good. This place, we're thinking, is your lock-up and leave for when you spend your five months on your boat. This garden, I think you could do something better with it for your, for your needs. What you see is what you get. That is the compromise with this house. Right. OK. Have you any idea where you are? No. Well... You are only five miles from Stamford, and if right. you haven't been, you should go. It right. is absolutely beautiful. And that's, that's basically your local town. Right. A lovely area for you to discover. This is a base more okay. than a home you spend three, home. six, yeah. five days a year. OK. No? All right. Right? Look, look forward to seeing. All right. Come with me. Thank you. This characterful period cottage was originally constructed in 1860. Although it has a well-kept and modern interior, it retains many original features. However, I'm interested to see if our buyers are really ready to face the reality of downsizing. Oh, it's beautiful, though. It's lovely. 
It is it smaller, is. much more. It's only two confined. of us to sit down, do. That is true. Yes. This room is yes. a very comfortable room. I don't need an enormous living room. This is very comfortable. Love this. The owners think that this panelling came out of the Norman church just over the road. It looks lovely, doesn't it? It does look it, good. And it suits, it suits the room. I love the fireplace. That, that natural stone just sets the room off beautifully. Now, you said, in your own words, making sense from it, you were downsizing in a way. This genuinely is downsizing, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> yes. And you both seem to have warmed to it straight away. Yes. No, I like this room. All right, well, look. I really do. Great reactions. Let's keep looking around. Let me just squeeze yes. in the middle here. Yes, of Thank course. you very much. It's a lovely kitchen, though. Am I benefiting from people that spend a long time on narrowboats? Because yes. it's, yes. it's not the biggest kitchen, but... It's bigger than my one on the narrowboat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's been well done. So could you see yourselves living, not full-time, but more of the time in a house with these proportions? I personally could see myself in the house. It's the outside space that might, have, might be a compromise too far. I get the feeling it's a little bit too tight. Right. A reason why there's less outside space than you'd normally imagine with these cottages is because they've built an annex out the back. Oh, right. Pretty much one up, one down annex. Right. Which I thought, for visiting is children and grandchildren... Part of this property? Part of this place. Oh, well, that's, that, that, does that make might a difference. be different. That makes a difference. Oh, you thought that was a neighbour? Yes. No. I'm going to let you loose on the annex later on. The master, I think you'd still use the one upstairs here, so let me show you that. OK, thank you. Outside the rear of the property, the two-storey annex has a small but comfy living room and sleeping quarters. But we're heading back through the entrance hall to check out the upstairs in the main house. As well as a three-piece family bathroom, there are three bedrooms on offer. One is a small but bright airy double, another a single with handy built-in cupboards. And that just leaves the largest bedroom. So the master bedroom faces out over that beautiful church. Lovely, isn't it? Lovely window. Good, good size for a bedroom. Good size for a bedroom. Much bigger than I expected from downstairs. I yeah. like it. It is good. I you like do, don't you? Yeah. Are you surprised you like it? No, because I'm quite happy to downsize. I'm not sure he's got his head round downsizing yet. Well, Both. inside or out, Peter? Both. Both? <laughs> say, was that a prompt? <laughs> no. Surely not. No. no. This room isn't says, too small. He says, I need, I need more space. The sitting room felt right. The kitchen is a touch small. Outside might make the difference. Let's go back outside to the garden, so I think that could be the sticking point. We'll talk yeah. it through. We'll see. Thank you. The only patch of garden here is at the front of the house and features a tidy lawn with mature planted borders, which on a day like today makes for a beautiful sunny spot. However, given Peter's thoughts on the property so far, I'm a little unsure whether the outside space here will be enough for him. Would you consider maybe turfing over that gravel and getting more garden? No, I don't think so. I think that works well as it is. We need somewhere for the car. I think I'd be happy with this. If we were downsizing, this would be it. But, Mel, you seem to have warmed to this. I like the idea of a smaller property, and this is very well presented. It's very comfortable. Um, I like the amount of space. I don't need a great big garden. OK, well, let's talk about the price. How much do you think this house on the market for? It's your turn first, I'm pleased to say. <laughs> it's semi-detached and it's an awful lot smaller. I'd probably go for 310. Right then. Peter? I think I'd probably go slightly lower. 295. <laughs> right, OK. I was trying to... You're going to shock to... us now. <laughs> yeah, I am, yeah. This place is on the market for £350,000. You're five miles from Stamford. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yes. Well, look, go back into the house, but also go to that annex. Have a good okay. look at it. And then, well, I'll meet you outside whenever you're ready. In fact, I know where I'll be. I'm going to be sat on that on lovely that bench, <laughs> basking the in the sun. sun. Good sunbathing. All right. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. See you in a okay. Thank Thanks. you. £50,000 under the top of our buyer's budget, this three bed semi detached cottage is beautifully presented throughout. With an annex handy for visiting family, it's located in the centre of a desirable Rutland village. When we came into the house, it immediately felt like a home. I love the way the rooms flow. Not many of them, but they actually work as you move around the house. It, it felt right. I was amazed about the annex. It gave a great deal more life to my feelings about the property. 
The garden is lovely. Realistically, it's far too small from what I envisaged. But having to rethink it in terms of downsizing and looking at a smaller property, it's the sensible option. This house feels as though we could move into it and enjoy living here. I was nodding off then. Sunbathing, oh. sunbathing. You're nearly off. awake. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? It's lovely. Uh, it's true downsizing. Yes, um, it is. And I like it because it's true downsizing. Well, that's something for maybe you both to argue over dinner about. We will. Argue? We will. Surely not. Discuss then, maybe. Debate. All right, let's go. Good. And they're longing to start a new life closer to their children, grandchildren and their narrowboat by moving to the Lincolnshire countryside. Coming up, we might have just struck lucky with our mystery property. Oh. <laughs> it gets better and better. What a kitchen. And I get to experience sailing of a sort as I take a step back in time to power up one of Lincolnshire's historic landmarks. You are on the throttle, you're driving it. <laughs> I'm driving the windmill. Well, I'm rather looking forward to today because I think for Mel and Peter, it represents a challenge. The mystery house, well, it gives them so much of what they wanted. Short of showing them a boat itself, it couldn't get much closer to the water. And the property itself, well, it's a good-looking Georgian specimen. So what's the catch? Well, there's something nearby that some people love and some people loathe. Let's find out what they think. For our last stop, we're back in Lincolnshire, in the village of Helpringham, which is around an hour and 40 minutes drive from Mel and Peter's boat. Lying on the edge of the fens, St Andrew's Church is the focal point here, set back from the village green. There's also a pub, a primary school and a tea shop. The village lies in a conservation area and there are several Grade 2 listed local features, including a red brick road bridge built back in 1825. Three miles outside of the village, in a very rural location, is our rather special mystery house. It's surrounded by open countryside inside of a wind farm, as well as some water. Now then, before we get to the house, I want to show you this. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> so when does the QE2 come in? Well, funny as you say that, this is navigable. On a narrow boat? Yep. We've spoken to the river inspector. <laughs> You are joking. No, I joke. You are joking. No, I do not joke. That is a mooring point. This is open for six months a year. You go up there, turn right, get to Boston, and it opens up the entire system to you. <laughs> How lovely. <laughs> oh, now that is incredible. Now, the whole gamble about this house was, OK, first of all, yes, it's remote. We Surely know it's not. remote. Yeah, we Surely know it's remote. not. But people love or loathe those. I personally love them. But oh, I love it... them. Do I you? love them. Yeah, I've got, right. I've got nothing against wind. So I wanted you to see all that's here <laughs> before we look at the house. So let's go and have a look at that. Oh, my oh, word. Cool. Love <laughs> Judging by Mel and Peter's reactions, they certainly weren't expecting that. I'm hoping that the house is going to come up trumps too. And I have a sneaky suspicion that it might. So let's look at the house itself. She's a beauty. Oh, that's fabulous. Beautiful. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Very, very substantial. That is amazing. It's far, far bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's not yes. a small house. No. You know, it's, it's typically Georgian in its proportions. Is it that old? Yeah, it was early 1800s. I'd like to see inside. I'd certainly like to see inside. Well, that's why we're here, yes. so let's do just that. Come on, yeah. This 19th century Georgian property features a style typical of its time and so has a striking symmetrical facade. It's an attractive property, and although it is rather remote, the generous layout and offer inside means our couple definitely won't have to deal with downsizing. So let's start with one of the two reception rooms. Oh, this is fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Gosh. I'm, 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 I'm speechless. It is an incredible room. Well, pro, you know, good size wood burner. Wood burner. I know you love those. Yep. And then nice detail on either side of the chimney. The Georgian proportions you get, I, I nice, always nice love. Nice and square. Yeah. Nice and yes. square. Can't wait to see the rest of it. Well, you've got this reception room, another of equal size, the other side right. of the official front door. But I think you're going to love the kitchen. So let me just squeeze Can't through Can't wait. So, big enough? Oh. <laughs> it gets better and better. 
what a kitchen. <laughs> Beautiful proportions. I'm going to be rendered speechless. <laughs> it's a lovely kitchen, isn't it? You've got dining right. area there. And then you've got almost the same size again, utility, the other side of that entrance hall. Really? Yeah, it's massive. Imagine the wet dogs coming in from outside. Oh, that was my immediate <laughs> thing. Of, that's the dog's house. Yeah. Oh, I want, to, I want to see the rest of it. Definitely want to see the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, quickly. OK, great reactions down here. Let's start looking upstairs now. OK, thanks. Back through the entrance hall, we're going up to the first floor, where there are three spacious bedrooms. All doubles that benefit from high ceilings with large sash windows that flood the traditionally square rooms with light. And there's also a family bathroom. Now then, this is officially the master, solely because it has an ensuite. Yeah. OK. I think you could make this into a lovely master bedroom. I'd be very happy with this as a master. Now, right at the top of your shopping list, Peter, certainly, was the garden, which is one of the reasons why we're here. So let's go back outside but also start thinking about price, OK? <gasps> I know. What a thought. I know, sorry. <laughs> this garden is the largest we've shown Mel and Peter. At around an acre and mostly lawn, the land here is partially walled, with established hedges that provide some shelter to the property from the winds sweeping across the fence. Now then, the man wanted gardens. Big enough? They're enormous. Yes. And the view between the spaces between the trees just is lovely. You can see it for miles. Yes. Well, all the property you see from here is yours. I mean, that new pantold roof, that's all your garaging. There's four <laughs> garages. So, you've seen a house that you... Well, I think you've been surprised by. We have been delighted by. Amazed by. Well, surprise me by guessing the price correctly. You go first. <laughs> four, two, five. Oh, I was going to say the same. Oh, I'll go 4.30. OK, well, I do have a little bit of bad news, because you're wildly out. This place in the market for £350,000. £350,000? You are joking. No. You are joking! That is an amazing price. I, I am astounded, honestly. I am I really astounded. I can't believe it's it. It's absolutely gorgeous. You need to think long and hard about it. It's... It's a very different environment to what you're used to. So, go back into the house. You may be some time, but the sun's going down, so get rid of that. I'll catch you later on. Thank you. OK, thank you. £50,000 under budget, this detached Georgian property with three bedrooms has a huge modern kitchen, a large garden, and the added bonus of a potential narrowboat mooring located on Fen waterways. As we came in through the door, it exceeded expectations. It was phenomenal. It just felt right. This is spectacularly good. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. It would make a wonderful home. It's exactly the sort of kitchen that I was looking for. Really, really good. Good space. I think the position, it's rural isolation, is something that we would need to think about. But again, that's something I think we could probably live with. Uh, the house offers everything. All done? Yep, I feel like Doctor Who. So you go through the door and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Not too big though, hopefully. No, no, because every bit of it is useful. So, is this something to compare others by? And who? Absolutely. Good. Def Absolutely. Definitely. Well, decision time looms. <laughs> Let's go off and do that. Good. during the 12th century. At one point, there were estimated to be over 500 windmills in Lincolnshire alone. Today, there are 136 remaining in the county in various states of repair. But one shining example must be the one standing proudly in the village of Heckington. This mill ceased working in 1946, but since the 1980s, it has been in the care of the Heckington Windmill Trust, who have spent the last 24 years restoring it. I've come to meet Trust Director and Mill Manager Jim Bailey on site to find out how such an iconic local landmark continues its long-standing legacy. Jim. Hello. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. And thanks so much for seeing me today. Now, I understand this windmill 
hasn't always been in this guise since it was constructed in, what, 1830? That's right. No, it was um, after 1830, it operated for 60 years. And then in a huge storm, the whole of the top, the five sails that it had um, blew down. Um, that would have been the end of the windmill. Did they repair it straight away? It was repaired within two years. John Pockington, who was a miller in Boston, he wanted to own his own windmill. Uh, there was a windmill in Boston. He bought it at auction, cost £72.10, shillings. Um, demolished it, brought all of the top work across here and the bricks and rebuilt this windmill. We go from five sails to eight sails. So how do you get a beauty like this up and running and going? I'll show you. Lead the way, sir. Thank you. Each sail has 24 shutters, making 192 in total. On a blustery day, they're opened, and on a calm day, they stay closed to harness the wind and maximise the power of the sails. I'm going to try my hand at setting these sails in motion. Here we are. Here's the brake. So hand over hand and pull it down. All right, and then just slowly release it, and there we go. Brakes off. So what we need to do now is close the shutters on the sails, and she'll go. So lean out. Yep. And you're going to pull down on this. When you pull down on this, you'll see the shutters slowly begin to close. There, you see it's closing oh, well, there. Oh, yeah, I can see them. Right, see, and so hopefully chilling. there is enough wind, and there she goes. She's off. Now, you're driving it. That's fine. She'll slow I'm down. I'm essentially on the throttle here now. You're, you're on the throttle. You're driving it. <laughs> I'm driving a windmill. Yes. The trust is made up of volunteers, around 200 in total, these enthusiasts work as guides and shop staff, as well as millers. Spread over six floors, the windmill is capable of milling over five tonnes of flour a day. Is this how it would have appeared hundreds of years ago? Yes, I think so. Um, there's about half a tonne of flour around us in various bags and sacks. There would have been much more because their output would have been higher. We milled half a tonne of wheat at the weekend. We milled the barley here for the brewery. We are the only windmill in the country that's milling malted barley for a brewery. Well, I wouldn't be thorough unless I gave that brewery a good inspection. I so agree. I think it's a good point to leave you. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. I'll pleasure. see you again. Bye. Literally sitting in the shadows of the windmill, the Eight Sail Brewery has been producing beer since 2010, and most of its grain is grown locally, malted locally, and milled right next door by the windmill. Proprietor Tony Bigot has got me working for my liquid lunch, so I'm breaking up hops in preparation for his beer making. So, Tony, what would you say would be the one big advantage, if you like, of having a windmill next door to you? It's two businesses that actually use the same basic ingredients. On one hand, grain being turned into flour. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, grain being turned into beer. We actually produce one beer that's on the shelf that is purely made from the grain, made next door, and it's named Kibble, which is coarsely ground. Now, Tony, you're not going to wait for me to fill this entire bin. No, you give me a, probably give not. Give me a pint, are you? Let's have a look. Go on, then. I reckon that's worth a half. <laughs> I'll take you up on that. <laughs> Go on, then. It takes seven whole days to complete the brewing process, including fermentation. Tony has perfected a range of 13 types of beer, several of which are award-winning, and my taste buds can't wait to sample the blonde. Oh, that's good, that is. That is really good. Well, look, I wish you all the very best with your enterprises, not only here, but in the women itself. And I'll see you again. Thank you. Cheers. Excellent. Nice to meet you. Well, as you can see, Mel and Peter reacted pretty well to a couple of the properties I showed them. But I have a sneaky suspicion the Mystery House might have just edged it. But has it done enough to warrant a second viewing? Let's catch up with them and find out. Hi. Now then, tell me, do you have a favourite property? Yes. Is it the one I think it is? The Mystery House? Yes. 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 Why? It's, uh, it's quite rural and it's quite isolated. But having said that, the house was beautiful, the price was unbelievable and the views were just gorgeous. When I ask how keen people are on a property, they normally say, if they're very keen, we'd like to go back for a second viewing. It sounds like your second viewing is, is quite unique. It's... Well, run me through what you'd like to find out more about. Well, we're going back tomorrow morning. Uh, we've already arranged that. And we need to go back and talk about the intricacies of, the, of actually running the house. You move fast. <laughs> <laughs> Faster than your boat. <laughs> but that's one part of the second viewing. The other part, 
is getting there by boat then, by the sounds of it. Yes, and that, 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 if we decided to go ahead and buy it, would have to be a longer-term um, project. Yeah. For once we've sold the house um, or completed on the house, got rid of the house down south, to actually come up and live on the boat and find somewhere that we could hire a smaller boat and take their advice. You know, can you get a narrowboat up the drain safely? I mean, it would be a real novelty to actually step out of the house and find that we could put the boat outside so we could load it up there and then... It's not a dream come true, is it? It's got lots of exciting potential. So, what about the county, then? We were able to look around the Mystery House primarily because it is in Lincolnshire. Things yes. are cheaper here. Mm. Yeah. Are you satisfied that you've chosen the right part of the Midlands? Because you could have chosen a few counties, mm. couldn't you? I just thought it was the flat Fenland. And, in fact, there's some beautiful countryside. Well, look, whatever happens tomorrow at your second viewing, please let us know, won't you? We will. Love to. Will. Good luck. Love to. Thank you ever Thank so you much. much. We've had a great time. Me too. Well, the fact that Peter and Mel would consider the Mystery House even if it wasn't in a waterside location shows just how strong a contender it actually is. But I'm buoyed to hear they're considering going back there because, yes, it's in a remote location, but it shows they're taking it very seriously. So tomorrow morning, first thing, they're back there for a second viewing to find out a few more bits and bobs about what it's really like to live out there. And I wish them both the very best of luck. See you next time. Mel and Peter did revisit the mystery house and decided the location was too remote after all. But the good news is they've since had an offer accepted on a barn conversion in a Lincolnshire village and are due to exchange very soon. If you'd